We do have some uh, executive sessions this evening. We have one for personnel, we're the town manager, and we have two under contracts. Right. One to do with the Florence Fire Station and one with the union contract. Right. Anybody got anything else? Personnel is in regards to the town manager? In regards to the town manager. Okay. It is. So I need a motion to so move. Second. Move and second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> do we have any need to amend the agenda this evening? I don't think we do. Not from me, Chief. Nothing from me. Move to adopt as written. Second. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We need to adopt the agenda. No, you did. We did, that's right. <laughs> Quiet. I'm just reading here quick. <laughs> <laughs> Act on the select board minutes. We had two of them. Right. We a had special meeting and the regular Special meeting and the regular one. Is there any omissions or corrections on the first one, which was the one in the afternoon? Mr. Discussion? That was the list of discussion. Here we go. Question tonight is no. <laughs> What's that? Anybody got a question that he says no? Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's to the point. I haven't touched it. question on the orders we got a few of them tonight I do want to point out something for Joe's benefit yep. he had asked about costs to outfit the cruiser yep. and um, we had learned from Pat that as of the last meeting there was about six thousand and change devoted to outfitting the cruiser uh, which was offset to some degree by a five thousand dollar only oh, grant to do so we do have an additional expense tonight uh, which you may have seen in tonight's orders. I think that's going to be the end of the costs to outfit well, that. There, there, there will be one small cost uh, because we had to have the uh, shotgun and rifle rack work on to fit the uh, pump in the floor, and that should be installed. In, and I'm thinking that'll be like 100. Because we already have the rack, we just had to have some steel weld to it to get it to fit that wide pump in the floor. Was that one you were talking about, John, the crosswind technologies one? Um, or the police Valcor at, and fee? Um, no, I'm looking at Central Valley <laughs> Communications police truck radio installation, $1,782. And that's in the original packet. Okay. The Valcor is an annual fee for all seven officers um, for their um, interaction, communications. Interaction. Here's a yeah. Oh, your computer. Yeah. Okay. I noticed there's a highway truck, uh, wipers and brakes, $2,579. Oh, was that a complete brake job or must have been um, quite an extensive bit of work? Yeah, uh, a couple of canisters on the truck door or need work on the back on the rock with that. You know, I've done that same work at home. We replace drums and shoes and the whole nine yards that's sometimes that's the tax yeah I'm wondering if that's what was done is there a lot of miles on this truck that uh no, no just the western star truck yeah it's the newest truck that's an old yeah, truck. any idea what the mileage is or well, no, uh, yeah. sure. okay. <laughs> i think it hasn't been one of our better no investments <laughs> investments no, no. no. <laughs> Wheels fall off and the other no, brakes. Not one of our better, I mean, that was going to be a better truck, but boy. Yeah, more issues than that than what we should. Learn and learn. Probably be our first and last one, I don't know. <laughs> and I, 
I also see there was the line striping was uh, seven thousand seven hundred four dollars. Does that kind of compare with what we've done the last time, or I think is that we've been a in the eight to ten thousand dollar range on line striping? Yeah, I wonder whether that about the same as it was before. Yeah. Well, we we just started doing this started a few doing years ago, about, years, three, yeah. about three years, four years. Two or three, yeah. Yeah. and that's on the class three roads. The state okay. is supposed to repaint the class two roads. The class three roads we started doing about three years ago, and this year we did, of course, the newly paved Whipple Hollow and West Creek Road. Also did Sangamon and yep. Plains Road to some degree, Depot Hill. Personally, I, personally, I think it's a good thing, and I had at least two people. Uh, kind of get on my case about why it hadn't been done earlier, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, uh, glad to see it's done, and, and uh, I, th I, I feel as though it's a good idea my, myself. I don't know about anybody else. But, oh, uh, that's why we did it. Yeah. I do have a question. Adam, what is Adam's road? Two or three? Joe? That's a, that's a three. It's um, a three? And hopefully be paved for the next, hopefully soon. Um, I'm not looking for paving. I was looking yeah, for paving. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I remember <laughs> from last year. But <coughs> <coughs> yeah. 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 Priorities. Uh, higher traffic road. Oh, guy, you know, so that goes with that. That's the tax credit one. Still on orders, or is that all done? Oh, you have more questions? Well, we got payroll. <coughs> no, we're done on orders. What's payroll? Well, I guess the other thing, we gave $2 million to the, the state school. for the schools. Yep. That's it's what, a third of what we give them? It's give or take, yeah. They do yeah. it in big, big bunches until later in the year. But that's the first tranche mm -hmm. I've seen. Yeah, I just think the public ought to know how much we just gave them. You have to we swallow when you sign that on. one. <laughs> yeah. Reminder budget, report. It's a good manager. It's a good reminder at budget time to remind people that the oh, yeah. seventy-five percent of what they pay taxes to goes to schools. It's not us. Yeah. Yep. We All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Veterans Day event. Uh, this year's Veterans Day ceremony was a big success, and I'd like to thank once again everybody who participated in the program and those who attended. Letters have gone out to Dave Trombley, our keynote speaker, Carolyn Bruce, the music teacher, and her kids. Father Moreau, um, who performed the invocation and benediction, and Scoutmaster Jeff Carrera. Uh, we appreciate everybody again coming out. It was a good event. Uh, there will be a staff meeting tomorrow, Thursday, November 21st at 9 o'clock. As always, selectmen are invited to attend. The town offices will be closed Thursday and Friday of next week, November 28th and 29th, in observance of the celebration of the Thanksgiving Day holiday. Property taxes were due on Friday, November 15th, for any of you who have forgotten to take care of that. Um, the town has received notice from Green Lantern Solar, a solar farm developer of plans to develop a four-acre, 500-kilowatt solar farm off Cornhill Road on land owned by Rick Colburn. The emailed notice we received is in your packets. I've forwarded it to the zoning officer, Jeff Biasuzzi and to the Planning Commission Chair and Vice Chair Mark Winslow and Kevin Blow. Um, and um, it may be that um, we might have some more information from tomorrow night to determine whether the Planning Commission uh, would like to uh, look into this matter or have hearings regarding it. But at the same time, we can always invite the developer to come speak to the select board if, if uh, that seems like a good option. So. Very early in the process, we just got the first letter. There's no official filing as yet. Now, where is that property along 
the road. I That's think there was a photograph. <laughs> yeah, yeah but I couldn't really figure out. Yeah, it's hard to it must be picture. to the east of his garage. Out no, but where is his? I don't even know. Corn Hill, is it between Corn Hill? between yeah. me yeah. Well, and the yeah, town line? Between you and the town line. Right. So it's you come over the town line on yeah. the right. Yeah. 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 The house is right there, and he has a big, big, big workshop. So on. it's up on top. It's not. Uh, it's across yeah. from Reeds. Yeah. Right oh, across, okay. Across oh, okay. Reeds. Over in there. Yeah. Okay. See. We've just been involved in they're bringing a three-phase line from Pinnacle, from Route 7 across Pinnacle Ridge and down to us. Oh, yeah. And I, probably that's opened up, the, I'm that. just assuming it's opened up the possibility for something like this. To go in there. Okay. Uh, so just put that big sure one in the Thomas's too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one's, um, there's been some personnel changes at the BLSG Mosquito District. Longtime leader of the organization and chair of the Mosquito District Board, Ben Lott, and a Brandon dentist, has uh, announced that he's hanging it up after many years doing what he's doing um, for free. Um, Pittsford Representative Mike Blaisdell has taken over the duties of chairman. And there may be a budget impact here because you may remember Last year, we were told we were going to have kind of a one-time increase to deal with legal fees from mm -hmm. the lawsuit that was pending. Now it turns out that we may not have that annual contribution drop down again because they may have to put that money into hiring kind of Somebody. a full-time person to run the organization um, because we can't always find people willing to do it for free. So stay tuned. We haven't heard yet, but we expect to get a letter from the BLSG with uh, their annual assessment. Um, the Depot Hill Sewer Project has an update. Um, last night, the Water and Sewer Commission met, and we all learned that the low bid for the project unfortunately came in $190,000 higher than the engineer's estimated cost of construction. So last night, the members of the Water and Sewer Commission heard from project engineer John Kiernan and the chief wastewater operator, Sean Hendy, and voted four to nothing to uh, rebid the job based on a change in the, folk, in the approach to the project. The original idea was to replace the two existing pump stations, one halfway down the hill, one at the transfer station, with a big transfer, with a big pump station at the bottom of the hill, which would then pump, collect everything and pump everything uphill. It turns out that in order to pump it all that way uphill, it requires a mammoth um, pump station, mammoth electrical needs, and also involving re um, laying new pipe all the way up the hill to accomplish that pumping. So it seems like the much more affordable option is simply to replace the two existing pump stations where they are. That, in, that it allows us to put in smaller pump stations, um, which are nevertheless able to be maintained above grade to keep the safety factor, but which also doesn't require laying new pipe all the way up the road either. So um, the um, Water and Sewer Commission was very careful while they endorsed this approach, they're very careful to want to get kind of buy-in from the select board as well. So I think we're going to put that item on the agenda for December 4th. Even though they have been authorized to handle water and sewer matters, they want to get you folks involved and in, uh, informed. Um, and so look for that on the December 4th agenda. But that's I the broad strokes of it. Can I ask one question just so we can... Didn't the engineers... If, if the initial plan was to put one pump at the bottom and pump it up, to, wasn't that in the original engineering plan? That is, yeah. 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 But, but, they, but they had no idea how much of an expense that large of a pump station was going to be. Yeah. It's a question that can be asked if we can well, get the engineer uh, Yeah, down. yeah. <laughs> I have, uh, you're paying the engineer to figure to, this stuff well, out. I agree. I agree. It's nice. So, yeah, it yeah. would have been okay. nice. And, and for just to let you know where they're coming from, um, they recognize that um, maybe earlier in the process they should have identified the fact that such a large pump might generate much larger bids well, on the project. Wrong. So they have, I think, already taken steps to assure us that any additional engineering won't cost the town anything in terms Who's of the engineering, engineering costs. That's Otter Creek Engineering. Otter Creek? Yeah. 
Plus, they had the problem with the only finding one vendor to supply right. the pump, which was also a factor. Right, because when you're the only game in town, you can kind of price it as you wish. So that was a lesson learned, they said, and obviously mm -hmm. it's unfortunate, but mm -hmm. looks like we may be able to rebid it mm -hmm. at a much more affordable rate, which again will hopefully have less adverse impact on ratepayers, ultimately. I wonder if they have projected whether this system that they're designing is up to capacity or allows for growth and future capacity. That's something that needs to be at least considered, whether they go mm -hmm. that route or not. That's another thing. But mm -hmm. well, certainly the lower pump. We shouldn't build you know, a facility some, that just could barely. Pick up a lot of the town on that lower one. We shouldn't build something that just barely meets our needs today when there's a potential for growth 10 years down the line. Well, I will point out also that, that the engineers, are, I would think, would, would reflect those kind of things. I will point out that um, there is, according to rumor, a plan to rebuild Route 7 <laughs> in the village, yeah. which would involve new water and sewer infrastructure. When did you yeah. hear that, John? <laughs> 50 years ago. I can't uh, confirm it, but yeah, I imagine it's back in 1961. Yeah. So that could be another opportunity <laughs> to deal with your growth <laughs> in the out years yeah. by, yeah, com I mean, by, by infrastructure improvements should, then. Shouldn't be overlooked. Understood. Understood. Um, the sidewalk scoping grant application has been submitted several days before our deadline, so we, we know we got in. Um, Kit Hudson stopped by my office several days ago to let us know that his family has decided to discontinue town use of his property as a town trail. That's the one behind the firehouse. Um, VLCT has drafted a model resolution which it hopes towns across Vermont will consider adopting by with regard to the likely legalization of recreational marijuana. The resolution's in your packet and I will place that on the agenda for December 4th as they'd like to hear from us by the end of the year for the legislature. Um, tax sale update, another taxpayer has made a payment to uh, resolve their debt, so we're now down to five parcels in, ta in delinquent tax sale jeopardy at the moment. Um, I have received a um, letter of application from an interested lister candidate. Uh, per Chief Hooker, we will put it on the agenda for the December 4th meeting agenda. And then finally, I have an update on the cell tower um, activity that we've been monitoring. I had, after our last select board meeting at the Lothrop School, contacted um, Janelle Smith, who was the AT&T representative. I told her first that the town had voted unanimously to oppose the Oxbow location, that is four to nothing with an abstention, against the Oxbow Road location. And second, I uh, had requested on behalf of the town a second balloon test if that site is going forward. And this is the email she sent back as an update on Friday. Hi, John. We submitted an application to the owner of the tower on Sangamon Road. It was determined that a centerline antenna rad center of 140 would provide coverage that would be acceptable, though not as good as the Oxbow location. The tower owner is investigating the feasibility of a drop and swap of the tower. The tower recommended um, by Shane um, was rejected by RF as being too far south. I had requested consideration of any antenna rad center in anticipation of a potential drop and swap on that one as well, but due to it being nearly four miles away from the target, RF said it could not achieve the target coverage for Pittsburgh. I'm hopeful about the Sangamon Tower. Um, otherwise, we will likely proceed with Oxbow, which sits at the, at the search ring center. I think we should have a sense within a few weeks. When we have finalized the location, the plan is to give a budding residence and the town a two-week advance notice, weather dependent, we need winds to be under four miles an hour, for a balloon test. And we can take photos for simulation for anyone's land who might, uh, who signs a um, right of entry form, which I will provide. Hopefully this update will be sufficient detail. Let me know if there's anything else I can answer. And that's the end of my report. Thank you, John. Any questions for the town manager? 
<coughs> Do we have any remarks from the board tonight? Yeah. Hearing none. Do we have any <coughs> public comment tonight? You're not public tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, here go. Hearing none, we'll go into uh, old business. Just a quick update, update on, on the, the fire ordinance. burning ordinance. Yeah, we have noticed, we have published the notice of the uh, adoption of the ordinance, of the, of the amendment to the ordinance, and we will have posted that around town as well, uh, per state statute. So we need another two weeks, is it? I think it's a total of 45 days 45 or so, days. so we'll let you know when it becomes yes. effective. Okay. I'll let Brad know as well. <coughs> New business, update on budget preparations. Yes, Chief, we have several department heads here today, which is great. And if you wouldn't mind accommodating me, I can just read through a you memo I've done, just kind of giving an overview of things. Uh, this second draft of the proposed FY 2021 uh, budget differs very little from the first one that you were sent. The only changes are the additions of expected debt service payments in the water and sewer budgets and the addition of a departmental budget for Pittsburgh First Response on the assumption the town wants to go forward with enrolling that group into town government. In doing so, I've simply zeroed out their $25,000 special appropriation and allocated the same amount into one line item as a placeholder for now until I hear further from PFR about how best to spread those funds among their likely operating expense line items. I have also made a couple other questions about their ongoing expenses and I hope to be able to um, flesh out their budget um, in the next meeting. Um, despite the best efforts of the select board to keep taxes as low as possible, wages, benefits, and other costs, of course, continue to rise, putting pressure on budgets. For example, this draft reflects the 2% wage increase for most employees based on the COLA in the union contract and substantial increases in the premiums for health insurance coverage for our 12 eligible employees. Tonight I hope to uh, present an executive session a proposal received from the union which may limit the amount of these premium cost increases. So maybe there's some good news coming. Um, general fund and highway fund balances are relatively low. This leaves us relatively little room for error in budgeting and less latitude when, if, if, if and when we ever wish to spend beyond the budgeted totals going forward. The second, the second um, draft of the budgets reflects the re original request from the department heads. Um, nevertheless, the select board has indicated it would like to achieve an overall no tax increase budget. The good news is that even at this early stage in the budget process, the general fund budgets for the new year is only, and I say only given the size of our budget, only $32,000 over budget when assuming a no tax increase. While the highway fund budget actually shows a $6,500 surplus, again, assuming no tax increase. I will look forward to your thoughts in the weeks ahead as the budget proce process moves forward. But in this packet that you have, the figures have been developed by the town manager, but um, left alone, with input from department heads, specifically Helen McKinley, Chad Uger, Randy Adams, Jeff Biasuzzi, Mike Warfel, Sean Hendy, Chief Hempel, Nicholas Michael, and Mark Winslow. Um, as you can see, Chad, Randy, Bill, and Mike are here with us tonight, prepared to discuss their budgets and, in some cases, work plans. That's true of the rec department and um, highway. Um, second. While the general fund is in relatively stable shape and is able to fund needed goods and services, the highway fund has been more volatile. And that's always going to be the case, depending on winter and unforeseen problems with our roads. As you will recall, town, the town borrowed funds many years ago through bonding to pave um, beyond what property taxes alone could support. Um, the roads paved with those borrowed funds are now showing their age and need resurfacing before they deteriorate further and require far costlier construction. So both um, the prior highway foreman, Sean Erickson, and his successor, Chad, have always felt that we should build up the paving fund in order to get back on track with resurfacing paved roads every 10 years or so. 
to preserve our investment made all those years ago in, with bond fund financing. Um, you'll see tonight that Chad is proposing a $16,100 increase in paving funds over the current year. And we've both agreed that since we've seen overruns in the SALT budget in recent years, we ought to bulk that up to be more realistic because we can't be um, looking for bargains when it comes to treating the roads with the proper amount of salt. So we've re we've increased that based on past experience from $79,000 to $100,000 in this draft. The highway, um, the select board may want to consider modifying the current policy of replacing highway department trucks every 10 years and move to something more aggressive like a seven or eight year replacement cycle. While this might require the town to appropriate more annually to the $100,000 we now do to the highway capital fund, these increased costs may be at least partially offset by A, trading in vehicles um, before more expensive non-warranty repairs are needed, B, less lost time when a truck is out for repairs, and C, higher prices from dealers when we want to trade in. Um, finally, in the last uh, couple of notes, the sewer department revenue budget reflects the end of the income stream from Otter Valley Union High School for work that part-time town employee Jack Shedd had performed until August 8th of this year when he retired. The water and sewer expense budgets reflect adjustments to labor and benefit costs to reflect A, Jack's retirement, B, Bruce Babcock's expected retirement as water superintendent in May of next year, and C, the recent hiring of Tyler Allen as a full-time employee, splitting time between water and wastewater functions. Um, in tonight's packet, you have um, some email exchanges um, between myself and Pat regarding this debt service issue, and also some another email from Chad Hewitt um, with thoughts on our budget. So with that said, you can begin with any of these department heads you like, and I'm sure they can kind of roughly outline what they have in mind for their budgets. Chad, you're the first on the agenda. <coughs> um, go over my work plan. Yeah. Okay. And that's in, the, that's, that's in tonight's that's packet. That's in tonight's packet. In the budget packet, you've got two separate yeah. ones. One's just a budget packet, and um, first you'll see the memo. Then you'll see these emails. Then you will see, I think, yes, capital yep. expense budgets, and then um, the work plans. Yep. Um, starting off with the contracted work, uh, paving. Like do. Well, as last year, like, um, so we got the grants to uh, Hollis Shakori Road and West Creek Road um, from Brandon Town Line to, well, 2.8 miles, which is almost to Markowski's garage. Um, I have figures for doing the whole right to the intersection, mm -hmm. and it's would it actually increase the budget to 30000 versus 16000 <coughs> So I was being conservative when I did the original budget. That's why um, I, just, I just figured I'd throw that in there just to think about how we'd get the full road done at once. But, uh, <coughs> in the box culvert bridge just by, past Florence Crush Stone, I believe should be ready for installation. We're waiting on that last batch of the trans money. Yep, we'll go see that. Um, and again, we'll um, crack sealing and line striping. Continue with that. Um, crack sealing, probably be able to do some in the spring that we didn't do this fall. And then schedule some for next fall as well. And then hopefully our sand shed will get all done with the permits and start with that. So, um, then we're again applying for grants for um, two different types: the better back roads, or better roads, better roads grant, and grants and aid. The better roads will be doing um, 
Barnard Road and Goat Farm Road, continuing some more uh, ditching, some stone line ditching, and getting them to meet standards. Um, grants and aid. Um, we'll be replacing some a couple culverts left on West Creek Road towards Proctor. That we'll finish that up so that road will be all set for. Hopefully, that's that's what our next next major road to finish will be from. It's a mile left. There's one box culvert that'll be need to done to be done as well. And so yeah, hopefully, it'll be nice to be done soon. Uh, let's see. And then our other work we'll be doing is our standard. I mean, prepping the roads for paving. Um, we have a few culverts to replace. Just. Minor ones that um, have reached their age limit. Kowski Road, Asia Road. Um, work on our equipment and um, then some other. The road inventory we had done for a few years, a few years ago. Some improvements on that we can. And we've done some, but just continue to work on those in uh, without having to go through the grant process. They're minor. Minor ditching projects to do, and uh, that pretty much covers that. Good. Questions for Chad? So, if if we <coughs> have to cut something from your budget, what are the things we absolutely cannot cut in your estimation? That's my biggest question. Um. <laughs> but what you're saying is pretty bare bones as it is. I, I mean, I think, like I said, I tried to be. I mean, first time looking at it, I, you know, like a kid making his Christmas list, but then yeah. went back through and looked and. Reality set yeah, in. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, you know, why? Nice to have a little bit of room improvement, but um, I understand. Mm -hmm. And nobody um, knows what winter brings either. That's that's one it of those <laughs> six weeks early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 That's winter. And, that's something you can't control. Yeah. Fortunately, our equipment takes the beat. Have not been yeah. Yeah. Takes a beat. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah. That's, that's okay. Yeah, that's uh, at your mercy on that. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I would like to see everything stay, but. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else, any questions? There's been some talk, I was on the news about, there's some concern about <coughs> the amount of salt that's going onto the roads in the state of Vermont. And uh, is that anything that, as a small town like Pittsford can can do, uh, can you use more sand and less salt, or, or there's just no way of dealing with that? I mean, what is going to become of that, or don't you have I, any, any idea? Probably nobody knows. Yeah, I mean, I, I have heard that as well, um, especially up around the lake. Yeah, so really good. Some well, they, cl they it. claim it's contaminating water and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, the um, salt. And, uh, but then they say all the extra sand residue does the same thing, so, uh, so I don't know what. Well, if you put a lot of sand on, then they, where there's houses, they complain about the, having to clean up the mess in the spring, but uh, sand not so you have much. to make Stole a choice whether you want to drive on a snow road or well, a sanded yeah. road. <laughs> people use the word sand, but a lot of That's, the highway yeah. departments use it's pretty, pretty good diameter stone. Yeah, it's not sand. Our trucks stay on the road. Well, Tom, uh, you just missed that. Chad reminded us that it, at least it keeps his trucks on the road. Oh, well, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Uh, yeah. Storm, so oh, yeah. yeah, it does. Personally, I mean, I I get up pretty early in the morning, and, and, and you guys do a good job up in my neighborhood. I have no complaints whatsoever. And if I leave at 3 o'clock in the morning, I probably won't have anything on the road, but 
after five o'clock in the morning, you guys have been through. And uh, I know that how that works, and it, uh, I work with it, even though you're not aware of it. <laughs> Joe, I think they do a wonderful job. Yeah. When I'm they do a good job. Morning, I, I do. I, I really do. And I mean, uh, yeah, you're all over the town. I'm I just am. I mean, you, you get some people driving with HUA, you know, but they, they really do a, a good job. Uh, I'll, need yep. a, I'll, need a, I'll need a translation on that. No, oh, no, 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 I, <laughs> no, I think out. I got it. Yeah. I think I got it. No, I, I, I mean, tr truly, I go around, and I, and I kind of know the cold spots and stuff. So oh, I yeah. always check them first. Yeah. Um, but I personally think they do a pretty good job. Yep. Yep. That's the one thing I would say this year. Have you been taking lessons from Brandon on plowing? Because Brandon leaves at least a foot oh. and a half, two feet on the edge. We don't have our wings on all the trucks okay. because we don't want to do okay. a lot of shoulder work yet. Okay. Just no, yeah. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, it must be they've been learning to the same people that teach mm. Brandon. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, it's kind of It's nice. early, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I, I am just, and I'm not, but it's, yeah. it makes the road a lot narrower with it's that. A, yeah. Oh, yeah. Foot and well, a half is missing. Plow, yeah. On each side. Yeah, I yeah. notice it on the upper plains road. You'll notice. Oh yeah, yeah. It's about this much. About that much left. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. 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 Hopefully this time of year it melts and it's gone. That's what our thought. It's not working out right now. Just adding on and adding yeah. on. Yeah. 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 Make our job a lot easier. Yeah, it does. Right. Well, thank you, Chad. Okay, Randy. I guess you're next on the hot seat. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if this is really a hot seat. <laughs> no. And there's also a work plan in your yeah. packet. Yeah, we got a work plan in yeah. your packet, yeah. so I don't know if you really need to go word for word with it. I'd like to also thank Dad for the work they do at the rectory. Um, they helped us dig out our foundation for our lifeguard um, shelter, um, and that was born recently. Um, yep. so thank you. Yeah. Um, our work plan kind of stays the same as last year, um, with some programs coming and some programs leaving. Um, We liked certainly when the mosquito, uh, we were sprayed for the first time in 2018, that was a huge hit. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and for some reason, the, the mosquitoes weren't that bad this year. Well, this year they weren't bad. After the wet spring, it kind of dried out nicely. Yeah, they did. Right. So it was, it was kind of a nice year. Hopefully, it'll be the same next year. But you never know. <laughs> Uh, the one thing that is good, that uh, we're asking about is our disc golf um, volunteers have been going increasing and carry four. Uh, they've been uh, working over there for over 10 years volunteering different time and energy, mowing and trimming. Uh, Terry doesn't think well, I've been told that Terry will not be coming back this summer. Um, and that means uh, they've been using his Toro mower, the old Toro mower that he uh, used to work with as a commercial uh, agency. So, um, they we're asking for an increase of $500 uh, to have Tony Beeson, uh, um, he paid 40 hours a season. The more? The more, yeah. It seems like a modest amount. And I'm just, I, I'm asking for 20, 20, and then 20, 20 more. The other thing that goes with that is that the, the rec department will need to buy a walk behind uh, more uh, since then I've talked to 
Mr. Haverstock several times um, about that uh, there is money left. Of, there's so money we have, budget we have money in the budget. Yeah, we've yeah. actually morphed the motor right. replacement yeah. fund into kind of a generic capital right, budget. Right. So you've got money in there. Quite a few yeah. dollars yeah. in there. Right. So that's not going to increase your budget. So. No. no. Well, that's good. Good. Any questions for Randy? No, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say what a heck of a job. program you've got. Yep. And everyone seems to always view that as one of the top things that bring people here in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. It sure is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. We, we appreciate it and thank you for all your hard work. You know, it's a lot of work. People don't realize how much work it takes to, oh boy. to run that department. Oh boy. Programming. There's more no. programming all the time, it seems. All the time. Thank you. Police Department. Yeah, this is the first time we've asked the chief to participate because I thought he's missing all the fun. He's missing all the fun. <laughs> hey, we get to. I'm going to get a little crack ceiling this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different kind of crack, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a pot, Chad. I think you should have done it last year. Or no, do you? No, no you're, you're um, all Was it Tom? Huh? Should have done crack ceiling last year. You should have, yeah. But, but given the size of the budget, we thought it'd be good to kick the tires and yep. kind of get an explanation about what you have in mind uh, in terms of the, f the department. Well, I, I, I'm going to grow by one part time person, probably. Um, it's to replace Timmy Cornell. Uh, we, we've got Dave Soya Jr. scheduled to go through the academy. So, um, but he's probably. It's not really adding, you're just replacing Yeah, right? just replacing one. Uh, and he's, before he's out on his own, he's probably uh, nine months to a year out. So um, th that will be um, the one the one big replacement. As far as equipment, knock on wood, everything is fairly new and up and running. Um, I am going to draw the speed card in here in a couple weeks and store it for the winter to save. Uh, Where is it now? I see it's gone from. Yeah. Uh, we, we chipped in one of the trucks oh, okay, to see so what it, and I told them that they could have it just before we put it away for a week or so, and it's up there on East Pittsburgh Road, yep. right at the line. Um, but I will draw that back in here, uh, save it from salt and snow and slush, and you know, and, and I will. Now that I had my hernia fixed, I will be able to pick it up and put it back into the garage for out of the weather for the winter. Um, and uh, other than that. I really, I, I've been sitting, since we had the meeting this morning, um, Dave says to me, well, I might ask you, what what, are you, what can I cut from your budget? I, I really don't know what you can cut from your budget. Um, you shouldn't yeah. have had chat. <laughs> chat did, but anyway. Uh, anyway. You learn quick. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, 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 I've been sitting here scanning. Like this. Like, I don't know. I don't know what you want to. Um, yeah. The, you know, there are some unforeseen things that, that, that go out, come out of my budget that I have no control over. And, um, and this budget doesn't touch the idea of Proctor yet. No, no, that's no, still that's, no, exactly. very vague that's, and that's, uncertain yeah, at this point. That's I'm not, not even going to be considered. We're just bringing Dave though. on to bring us back up to what we had right. and give me a little more flexibility in schedule. And this is the second year that we've had the amped up amount for the cruiser replacement <coughs> fund up right. to $15,000 a year. And hopefully that helps us eat away at the shortfall that we've had in the past. Right. Well, we, we, we should get... The board uh, is always free to recommend increases. We could even try to do more, but... That well, if we're going to try to hold the yeah. line this year, this might not be the year to do it. We're, we, sh we should have three more years on the Durango, unforeseen circumstance, and the truck, we should have a five, at least five years. I think we should go to so. what? Motorcycles. More. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to put them on motorcycles? Is that what you said? <laughs> that would be cheaper. It would be a lot cheaper. Well, you, just, yeah, you can do a vehicle with well, one horsepower. Well, for summertime. Power. Summertime, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to buy the winter coat. <laughs> no. We tried that in Rome. Didn't work. Didn't work. It, it, no. It's really, no. It's no. I'd rather have a you know, 2,600-pound car wrapped around me if I'm going to crash than... Yeah. 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 So, then go slide uh, down the road <laughs> with a helmet we, to protect we, you. <laughs> we, I thought you were going to say a horse. Uh, well, and that's another option. <laughs> uh, if you if you want to provide the fence for the, the village, the grazing area, we'll, we'll ride. But, <laughs> I, I don't. I, I, I just don't see anything. No. Um, okay. Okay. Um, 
I'm planning to bet your guys' mercy. Anybody else got any questions for Chief Warfel? Is your is your budget up this year over last year? Or are you holding the line, or how is it? It's up less oh, than twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, oh, it's not a lot. Oh, we can take care of that. Yep. And that's so that's but that's, that's two hundred and thirty-four like to two hundred and thirty-five thousand. Not counting anything to do with Proctor if we right. do something right. totally we, we, different. We're, we're still a long ways away. Well, from we're a long ways away yeah. on that. So, yep. yeah, I, my like I said, my concern is pitcher. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mike. Chief Hempel. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, we do have an <coughs> increase in our proposed budget uh, from last year. Um, one of the increases is our labor. Um, last year we had a big increase in labor. Um, a lot of calls. Our hours were up. Um, and I can see that <coughs> continuing. Um, some of it is the mutual aid, which... Uh, we agreed to be in the mutual aid and we're going to help the other towns out because they help us. Um, you don't have as many people around during the day, and it's, you know, it's a problem. It really is. Uh, I feel we probably got the most dedicated crew there is. And, uh, you know, if we can keep it that way, I'd like to keep it that way. Um, another area is our personal protective equipment, um, which we really can't cut, cut corners on that. We increase the cost of it every year. Um, we do have some gear that is that is getting older and needs to be replaced. This is personal gear for our, our people to protect them properly. Um, was our feeling? Um, and the new equipment we went up on that that helps cover that end of it too. We're still fighting the air pack thing. Um, we replace five, we need to replace our projected proposal is to replace another five this year just to stay in line. Um, I don't know if all of you have Dave, you may not have been involved in it, but uh, we did get a grant a few years ago for air packs and we replaced them all at once. And the problem is now they're up for replacement. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying the grant wasn't a good thing, it was a great thing, but and you know, so now we're running into the we're running into the problem of having to replace them. And we have we had had our bottles tested early, so we could save on replacing some of them. So um, the plan we got, I think, if uh, if we stay with our plan, probably some this year, skip a year, but. No, we have been, like we did the last time. Sometimes it's work where we do a, a work from, yeah. from two budgets and get your order placed. And it's oh, I see. You yeah. pull from each budget. Budget. Right. We get them all. But you can How many of those bargains by, by big purchases? Total. Yeah. Um, totally in the department. There's 17, 18, 17, 18 of them. Yeah. 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 The critical yeah. part, yeah. Is, like Chief will mention, is you have to maintain your interior guys, mm -hmm. have to be up and current. I mean, that's. You get somebody hurt and killed. Oh well, <laughs> we would swing. And all the crap that's so all that's, the chemicals and stuff that are in the house. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you, you just have yeah, to. Yeah, no, I get that. <laughs> we may find that we can cut their our quant our quant yeah. quantity of air packs that we have. We may not need. No, you may not need that many, but you're going to need at least your right. your complete interior yeah. crew has got to have their packs up and because the they're all face fitted that, and everything now. It's, the it's other a thing lot is that we, we hmm. want to stay firm on our truck maintenance, so yeah. you know that's pretty important. Uh, you're going to have them working properly to do the job. So we've got some good equipment. Uh, Tom and Butch left us with some good equipment, and uh, we try to maintain it. So. Did you get better toilet paper in there? <laughs> no, no. no. Hey, that comes from up here. So if you got any complaints, take it right over there. <laughs> I'd, be to, I'd be happy to discuss that with you, Mike. <laughs> well, I bet he can take you. <laughs> it takes two layers of skin. <laughs> You've got a garden hole down there. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I don't think the Herald picked that up. Right? He probably, <laughs> 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 yeah, he he's, did. He's yeah. smiling now. <laughs> he's got he's, he's live streaming. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you what, boy, that's the brutal stuff there. <laughs> that corn cob looks better every time. Yeah, but somebody broke the little hammer. Oh, I saw it. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Anything else, Chief? Uh, no, I think that's about it. Our you know, communication thing is. Uh, we did drop that a couple a couple thousand dollars. We were anticipating a an increase. Uh, we we're going to try to put some repeaters up on our antenna sites to give us better radio coverage because our coverage is terrible. Um, but it looks like the cost of it isn't going to be quite as much as we thought. So um, they are going to try putting the first one on Killington antenna site. And we're going to go with that and see how it works. Um, there's going to be a cost to us. We're going to have to reprogram our pagers and, and radios. But, yeah, um, that I think a it's worth bit. a try. And the state police can talk all over the state with a portable radio. Um, we can't talk next can't door. Use our portable <laughs> radios talking to each other on the yeah. scene. So mm. it's just uh, ridiculous. You know, it's just something that needs to be updated. And, uh, anyway, we're trying. So the county's. The county's trying. In fact, we're going to another meeting tomorrow night. So. Good. A couple questions, if I could. Yep. Um, so I'm looking also at your capital expense um, budget request, and my question is: You've got two things listed for 2021, and that's five SCBA packs and five sets of protective gear. Is that already encompassed in this budget, or is additional that spending that's you'd like to do beyond your budget? Something possibly we might would like to do beyond it. Okay. Well, the, the, the um, only the reason I mention it is that there's really no capital budget for the fire department other than the truck replacement right, that's fund. The only one. If and we wanted to start um, making uh, plans for a big, big capital expenses, the board might want to start appropriating money toward a capital fund and set up one. Right. I think we probably we might have to wait a couple of years on that and see how we do with our present Plan, I guess. Well, that's that's it, certainly you know, what I what I did, and I assume year. Bill does the same thing. We kind of wait till the end of the year to do our budget when we spend the bulk of the money on the fire department. Yep. It's always been sort of that way. Yep. That way, if we have extra monies right. that were there, we sometimes because the budget is a it's a it's a just it's a, a it's a best guess. guess. Yeah, it's a yeah it's a <laughs> guess yeah. as to a what you can map. do. Yeah. So if you've got say one hundred and fifty thousand, you only spent one hundred and thirty. Yeah. You got twenty thousand. You probably could play with and maybe move it over to one of these items that you really need mm -hmm. and do it that year. That's mm -hmm. what what we've always kind of yeah, done it that way. Try to do that. Yeah. And without going back and last year, I think we, we didn't act quick enough. We right, so right. Year, so this year, I'm sure we'll watch it and see. I do see in the next year we're looking at the new ladder truck, and we do have you know several hundred thousand dollars already on account for truck replacement. But I know the chief has there again. To me. That purchase would probably be a, a lease to buy, like we've done on all the other trucks. Right, you you right. come in with a good size down payment, right. and you finance it for because the, the finance rates are so <coughs> phenomenal. Yeah. It doesn't pay you to go spend your whole wad at one time, mm -hmm. and that lets you not deplete your total fund. Yep. That's what we've always done that in the past. So that you know you're gonna it's gonna take you probably I'm gonna guess almost a year to to yeah. spec the truck out. Then you're talking a year to have it built. Mm -hmm. They don't build them in six months. It okay. usually takes about a year to build these trucks. They're so sophisticated in today's world. But didn't isn't that latest truck you got a ladder truck? That is, but that that was a that's a that's a 1998. Yeah, but yeah, and but it's up. Your your life on <laughs> people don't realize this too. After a certain number of years, NFPA doesn't recognize it. Now your insurance rates go up to the roof. <laughs> it, it's a catch-22 trust me so we've tried to keep it so that you know this truck is probably going to go another we're hoping what two three four years possibly so by the time he specs one out gets it on order the monies that are going in here every year is was 80,000 a year mm -hmm. no yeah. you're gonna have another two three years going in there which I think there's what do you got in there now about four roughly Around four, 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 four hundred thousand there now <laughs> so you'll have a half a million or more in that account by the time they go to place an order. Mm -hmm. And then you probably have another year or two 
that you're going to have monies going into it and then finance the balance for five, six years. We are going to get our truck our committee together after the first two yeah. years. So we'll start. Well, that start takes a while to even do that. It's, it's, a, it's a long process. And we do have a gentleman on the fire department that was on Killington that yep. spent. He picked up two of their ladder well, trucks. Two, two ladder trucks. Yeah. So, so he's quite familiar with really help us. Yeah. We're not looking for anything elaborate. It's no. Something to do the job. You know, we're, all, we're all taxpayers too, so you know, that's <laughs> it. It, uh, it hurts every year when you pay the taxes for sure. But. So you want to continue with the low-cost toilet paper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Michael just have to bring an extra roll. Bring, 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 bring it from home. Bring it from home. Bring it from home. You better write your name on it, Mike, so someone will go on it. That is some brutal uh, stuff. <laughs> Anybody got any more questions for the Chief? Hearing none, we'll move on to the re relocation of the Florence Fire Station. Thanks, we'll everybody, for coming. Yes, if thank you, you all for coming. If you don't feel, feel you have to. And Bill and Tom, if you want to stay yeah. for a few minutes. Um, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, you, as you know, the uh, fire department has kind of felt a little bit of a pinch over at the OMIA facility that has been generously leased for zero dollars per year by OMIA, where we have uh, pre-positioned a um, fire vehicle. The problems are that, A, if um, there's an OMIA problem, it's probably better to arrive from off-site rather than be stuck inside in the middle of the problem. And also there's lots of train and, tra and uh, truck vehicle conflicts that can slow your response time uh, to OMIA or elsewhere in Florence. And I think with that in mind, the thought was maybe we ought to r find a place to relocate the uh, fire substation, build a modest uh, shelter for it with water and septic um, systems electrification so that you could have at least a vehicle there all the time to do rapid response to Florence. Is that basically correct? Basically, plus it was a, a maintenance issue too we've had for years over there with the ground white product gets into a lot of the controls and stuff oh, in that yeah. truck. Yeah. It's really, it's really, it's almost, it's probably worse than salt. Yeah, it comes up to switches and relays yeah, and, and, yeah. and and we don't have water in there so you, you, can't, you can't wash, wash it down. You can't wash it. You, you wash it in Pittsburgh and you take it back over there but <laughs> by the time you back it in it looks worse than it did when you, when you came over here. So that's one of the problems. Butch and I have been working on this for what? Jesus. 10 years or, or, or better, sure. trying to get a site. And what kind of brought this to light was Dave and I, we, we've had a, a site there for what, three years that they were been talking we've about? We've been talking about the McCullough the property. The McCullough property, where we talked about Near the old having church. that, because there was a septic system there. Yeah. But we didn't know if it was approved or not. Mm -hmm. well, anyways, we, to, to back up, that was Omeo's site that they were willing to share or relinquish to us and here a few months ago we wanted to kind of better the end of the truck route to the West Creek Road where that corner is those trucks go around there and they're always cutting that sky's lawn off all the time it's, it's been a problem for many years so Omeo agreed to let us take shave off some of that lot which was the old uh, Champagne. Champagne. Most recently yeah. Swan, or yep. Swan or Champagne. Yep. Yep. And they recently just tore down that building. Uh -huh. And we were over there looking to see what <laughs> Chad was that day and say, did you do the work? Yeah, we did it. And I said, but really didn't shave off what we were talking about. <laughs> so we got looking at it and we had some people there from Omeo. Uh -huh. And it was kind of our idea that we needed more of that land to make that light sight line better from Markowski's going south mm -hmm. and where you could kind of tee the end of the truck route a little bit more than just that real sharp corner mm -hmm. come up and then a better swing well as we stood there looking at it all of a sudden the, the light bulb came on talking to Omeo people I said well if we're talking if we have to get somebody to survey this give the town or really or let us buy whatever it is wouldn't it make more sense to even just swap the sites because the site is about the same acreage, almost identical. 1.9 acres, yep. yeah. Yeah, almost two acres of land. So that's kind of where that came about, would save money on both parts, and the, Omeo and us. And at this point, we probably can say that we're thinking about approaching Omeo with a proposal right. to take ownership of that parcel and 
we probably should talk about our term then strategy this will be executive, the executive session. session so that's kind of where we're at and uh, to see where we can go there that'd, that'd be a lot better location well it's more centralized oh so gosh yeah. you go north yeah. south and yeah. straight back to town right, you're right there to town. you're right there plus you, you got water you got sewer and you got electricity right there on site so i'm saying and it would let us take a piece of that front property yeah. town to yeah. straighten exactly. that out all, all at the same time mm -hmm. yeah so you're going to accomplish two things at once so we'll we'll discuss that in the executive session so sense. i don't know if you've got any further but that's kind of where we are. This probably won't happen for whenever. No. But it's we got to start somewhere. Yeah. But we got to start somewhere. At least you got something to work with. Right? Yep. So, so. Yeah. Cool. other than yeah. that, with that right. said, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. We appreciate everybody coming tonight. With that, we'll uh, go into executive session. <laughs>